Okay, today we're going to go over something a little bit different, and that is basically how to read a MOSFET symbol. And it's kind of crazy how many symbols out there represent what seems to be the same thing, just your simple MOSFET. But even among the IEEE standards, there's three different ways of representing practically the same thing. So while there's even more than what IEEE has out there, I'm going to focus on IEEE and try and make those at least more intuitive so you can understand why they did the symbology the way they did it, or at least the way I understand they did the symbology the way they did it. And that way, when you look at it, at least those will be very straightforward. And then when you look at other ones, hopefully you'll have a better idea of what's going on with those other random symbols because I, it's really quite odd. But the reason I think that this is the most, uh, this is so complicated is because there's a lot going on. A discrete MOSFET is going to be different than one that's actually embedded in IC and actually done on a silicon level, um, on a silicon level design. And so I think that that's why there might be some differences. Either way, it's complicated. We're going to go over them, and I'm going to go over the three different IEEE ways of showing your four standard MOSFETs and um, then hopefully we'll learn something from this experience. So the first thing is there is the IEEE shorthand. And I think this is ideal for when you have something that's printed. I don't think this really shows up very well when you're writing it by hand. But um, if you remember from the NMOS versus PMOS and the depletion versus enhancement mode MOSFETs, um, there's a couple of things there that are really important to understanding this. So if you remember that, great, we're ready to move on. If not, I actually recommend you pause this and go check out our video about the differences between NMOS and PMOS and enhancement versus depletion, because it's going to make all of this make a lot more sense. So, okay, hopefully you went and did that and now you're back. So the first we have is the shorthand nort notation, notation shorthand notation. And this is kind of the simplest way to show things. Here you have your drain, source, and gate of an NMOS enhancement. Uh, I'm just going to put enhance. Okay, and this looks pretty straightforward. You, you've got your typical line down here. In my mind, this represents the channel between the source and the drain, and then this little blank spot rec represents the oxide, and then you've got your uh, metal right here that's part of your gate. Gate. So as you put a voltage here, it's attracting the carriers up here, your um, your electrons into the end channel to close that up. So that makes sense. And then if we want to show the PMOS, it's actually the same thing, but they put a dot right there, and that's your PMOS enhancement. And I'm just going to put a dash E to make that a little bit more straightforward. So if you've done any digital logic, anything like that, you know, the inversion symbol is pretty straightforward. Now, I think that's a bit unfair because a PMOS is not just an inverted NMOS. I mean, I guess it is in the N channel and the P channel being inverted, but you can't just kind of act like, oh, you know, if I put a PMOS in there, it's going to be a complete switch. But that's, that's how it's being done for the shorthand. So for the shorthand IEEE standards, you have your very basic shape right there for your NMOS enhancement, and then your very the same very basic shape with an inversion dot right there to say that it's a PMOS. Now for the depletion layer, it looks like this. Not depletion layer, depletion MOSFET. Looks like that, and you still got your gate drain source. Now the only difference, and this is why I don't think that this works very well with your handwriting, is that they make this line a little bit thicker. Now for me, intuitively, that makes sense because with an NMOS and a PMOS depletion mode uh, MOSFET, you have more carriers right there. So in my mind, that's like representing the thicker layer of carriers that are naturally um, right there in the channel. Is that what they intended? I don't know, but that's what I thought. So and then you probably are not going to be surprised by this. But then your PMOS depletion, I can't even draw a straight line, is also the same thing, but with the dot. So this is the set of the first three shorthand IEEE notation, the way they show MOSFETs. And again, if you just understand it as a channel, the oxide, the metal right there, and then that as an inver inversion layer, everything, then this is pretty straightforward. So let me just put PMOS slash D. And those are the things that we worry about for the first of the three. So now let's go into the 
the set where they are talking, they show the base as well. Because in this case, we're just assuming that the substrate is attached to the source. And so if that's not the case, you need to use this style of symbols. So for this one, you go here and then you put those dotted lines right there. And you put a line right there and then that's still drain source gate. Now the biggest one here, and this is something where you have to make sure you're pointing your arrows right, you have an arrow right there and then this is going to be the base or the substrate. Now if you put S there, that'd be confusing, so we're going to put B for base, even though that's showing the substrate is going to be connected to whatever this is connected to. So now on this one you think, okay, what, what are these lines for? And we'll get, get to that in a second. But this is your NMOS enhancement symbol showing also the connection of the base. Now look at that arrow, it's pointed inwards, and that is how you know that this is an NMOS. Because if you take a PMOS, it goes and it looks basically the same. No inversion thing right there. But now there's an arrow pointing out. And the easiest way to remember this, this is the same arrow direction as a PN junction. So you've got P as your base and N as your, sub as your channel in your NMOS. And then you've got on a PMOS you've got an N substrate and a P channel, and then you've got your arrow pointing the other way. So that's how you can tell the difference. With this symbol, the, the difference between NMOS and PMOS is just the direction of that arrow. Now for the depletion, they just solidify that line, but keep the arrow the same. So NMOS, and then PMOS, wow. P, MOS, depletion, depletion. Okay, and much like up here, where it just showed it thicker, I imagine this as being, okay, you have already the carriers from your drain to your source on both of these. It's not like here where you need to use a voltage on your gate to attract the carriers to really close up that channel. So that's why you get that solid line. And that to me is how this all makes sense. You can tell the difference between NMOS and PMOS by the direction of the arrow, which makes sense in accordance with a PN junction. And then you've got the dotted lines for the enhancement and the straight line for the depletion. All right, so we've only got one more. Okay, for this last set, it gets complicated again. I, I don't like how, how it gets complicated because for the NMOS, you still have the dotted lines indicating the enhancement, but now since you don't have an arrow, because you're assuming again in this set of symbols that the base is connected to the source, you don't have that arrow going to the base, you have an arrow on the source itself. And this arrow points out like that, and that indicates the current flow on an NMOS. So for this set, you can tell the difference between an NMOS by the arrow pointing down versus the arrow pointing up on the PMOS. So let me grab this. And the reason I don't like how confusing this is is because with the other one that we just did, you've got the arrow pointing in for the NMOS and out for the PMOS. And then on this one, since we're putting Oh, but this was indicating the PN junction direction, whereas this is indicating the current direction. But that's just confusing. I don't know why they did that. It's tr I, I struggle with it, and it's something where every time I'm, wait, which one is it? And then I have to think about it and figure it out. But that is the difference there. So when you do not have the base connection right there explicitly, then you do it like this, where you indicate that it's NMOS with the arrow pointing out, again, indicating current flow, or the arrow pointing in. And then again, the only difference here between the enhancement mode and the um, depletion mode is that you have that solid line right there. But again, NMOS, what is going on? NMOS depletion and then PMOS depletion. Okay. So that's it. Those are the three. There's the shorthand. There is the set of symbols that are used when you are um, 
explicitly connecting your base to something else, uh, your substrate to something else. And then there is the last symbol that is not the shorthand, but it also assumes that your base or your substrate is connected to your source. So hopefully that description and hopefully the uh, at least the logic behind why you have those dotted lines, why you have that inversion layer, why you have that arrow there, and why you have that arrow there, hopefully this helps uh, not only with these symbols, but as you're looking at other symbols. And that's it. Okay. If that helped, fantastic, great. If there is any confusion or questions, comments, whatever, leave them in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed it. Do all that jazz that YouTube people always ask for. Subscribe, like, whatever. But most importantly, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care.